tend to be where the light and darkness meet on the edge of the horizon through the trees i am a narcissist crippled with self-doubt i've got a courage that brings me to my knees hello hi and howdy how's everyone doing today i certainly hope everyone's doing well if you're new here welcome if you are a return subscriber, as always, welcome back. If you get anything out of this content and you haven't done so, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment with your thoughts. I do try to answer all the comments. Today's story is a suggestion, and I was asked not to use this person's name, and I will absolutely respect that. I want to add real quick that this case didn't go to trial due to a plea bargain. For that reason, there's really not a lot of information I was able to verify. This is not going to be a long video for that reason, but this baby deserves her story nonetheless. Now let's jump in. Kaylin Ann Janelle Cologne was born on the 15th of May in 2020. She was lovingly referred to in her obituary as Big Pat Tweedy. She was born premature at 33 weeks and she spent 22 days in NICU. Kaylin had a series of health issues, including an underdeveloped hip on one side, and she had aspiration issues per her mother on the 911 call. Despite the problems per her obituary, she was the sweetest and happiest baby with the most beautiful big blue eyes. She was born to parents Taylor Ann Vance Mize Pitts and Christopher Cologne. She also had two brothers, Carter and Caden, and one sister, Adeline. Taylor and Christopher did not stay together, and Taylor moved to 114 East Vine Street in Bradford, Ohio. Joshua Allen Mize was born on the 4th of July in 1991. He was convicted of trafficking coke in Clark County in June of 2019. He was released on parole under the supervision of the Ohio Adult Parole Authority in May of 2021. He began a relationship with Taylor, and he moved in with her and her children. At this time, visits with Kaylin's father, Christopher, were stopped. I will add, as far as criminal history, all I could find on Taylor was a stalking charge, and that offense date was the 28th of September in 2022 after this happened. Kaylin was only a year and four months old when she was left in the care of Taylor's live-in boyfriend, Joshua Allen Mize, only four months after his release from prison, only weeks after moving in with Taylor and her children. While it is unclear if Taylor was aware, per many Facebook posts, Joshua did have a violent past in relationships. There was an unverified comment made on Facebook by a friend of Taylor's that due to medical issues that Kaylin was born with, she had began losing hair and bruising easily. However, this started at the same time Joshua began living with the child. If it was due to medical issues from birth, why did she not have these problems since birth? On Monday, the 13th of September in 2021, two separate calls were made to the Miami County 911 in Ohio. The first call came from Taylor, at the time Vance. According to Taylor, her boyfriend, Joshua Mize, called to tell her that Kaylin was not breathing. She said after he told her that Kaylin wasn't breathing, he hung up. It was during this call that Taylor told the 911 dispatcher that Kaylin suffered medical issues due to being premature. She said, quote, she is only a year old, end quote. A second call was placed to 911 from a man who did not identify himself. He told the dispatcher that he was with the child, the child was not breathing, and he told him he was doing CPR on the child. When asked what the child was doing prior to her being unable to breathe, he said, quote, Nothing happened. She has a lot of issues. Her mom takes her to the doctor a lot. She has a lot of issues, medical issues, end quote. After a brief period, he told the dispatcher that Kaylin started to doze off and fell. At the end of a three-minute call, the caller, later identified as Joshua Allen Mize, told the dispatcher that the baby had started breathing again and was moving around and the paramedics were now on the scene. Bradford Fire and Rescue crews arrived on the scene at 114 East Vine Street in Bradford, Ohio at around 6.13 p.m. 
Kaylin was resuscitated and she was transported to the Upper Valley Medical Center. She was later transferred to Dayton Children's Hospital where she passed away on the 14th of September in 2021. A celebration of life was held on the 29th of September in 2021 at the Atkins Funeral Home. A criminal investigation was initiated by the Miami County Sheriff's Office after doctors reported the injuries present on Kaylin were suspected abuse. Following the approval of the charges against Joshua Mize by the Miami County Prosecuting Attorney per Miami County Sheriff Dave Dushak, Joshua Mize was arrested around 9.30 in the morning on Wednesday, the 15th of September in 2021 in Clark County following a brief manhunt after he tried to run away. Comments were made on news stories, not from the news, but the comments under the news stories about Joshua's arrest and on a Reddit post that Taylor was with Joshua at the time of his arrest, though I could not confirm this. While Joshua was in jail, the Miami County Sheriff's Office and Miami County Children's Services continued to investigate and build a case against Joshua. Joshua Allen Mize pled not guilty during his arraignment on Thursday, the 16th of September in 2021. He was held in jail on a $1 million bond on charges of first degree, taking the life of Kaylin, second degree felony child endangering and felonious assault, tampering with evidence, and theft of property valued of over $1,000 but less than $7,000. Per the bond document, if Joshua was able to make bond, he would be required to wear a GPS monitor. He was also ordered no contact with Taylor or Richard and Debbie Bourne, which would be Kaylin's grandparents per Kaylin's obituary. The order was signed by Judge Janine N. Pratt, but where the defendant was to sign, it said refused to sign. It seems that the no contact order with Taylor was not followed through as per Taylor in many social media posts, she visited him and they married, which seems would be tricky to pull off without contact. On the 12th of October in 2021, pre-trial and trial was scheduled for Joshua. He received defense counsel, which was John Mealing. The prosecutor was Paul Watkins and Anthony Kendall. Montgomery County Coroner Kent Harshbarger said that Kaylin Cologne died from trauma of the head and neck. She died from massive posterior fossa subdural hemorrhage and thin collections of blood around both sides of her brain. Also noted in the preliminary autopsy results was an old abdominal trauma. He ruled her death to be a homicide. As to be expected, local people were furious. Much of the anger was aimed at Taylor as instead of fighting for justice for her baby girl, she was fighting for Joshua's freedom. She even married him so she could not be brought in to testify against him. She argued with many people in the comment section of Facebook and TikTok posts under her own name and under Joshua's name. She posted videos on TikTok of Joshua and Kaylin with captions such as, Blood couldn't make them closer. And even though doing this without you by my side is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, I'm doing it. And I wish you could see me. I wish you could be here to see me transform into this new person. But you're not here. In fact, from the comments posted on Facebook, it was Mother and Internet Strangers, not Taylor, who was fighting for justice for Kaylin. There was even a petition filed on change.org to arrest Taylor. Today, however, after divorcing Joshua and marrying another man, only one of those videos remains on her TikTok account. On the 6th of April in 2022, instead of a trial in front of Judge Janine N. Pratt, Joshua took a plea. For the plea, the state of Ohio agreed to drop the original indictment. Joshua pled to involuntary manslaughter, child endangering, obstructing justice, tampering with evidence, and theft. For the charge of involuntary manslaughter, Joshua was sentenced to 16.5 years. For obstruction of justice, he was sentenced to three years. For tampering with evidence, he received a sentence of three years, 
and for the theft charge, Joshua was sentenced to one year. Per the Ohio inmate search, his expected release date or parole eligibility date is the 10th of September in 2039. Following the plea agreement, prosecuting attorney Anthony Kendall addressed the plea agreement and the reason for the reduction in the charges. He said the case developed unforeseen risks as it progressed. He further explained that the Montgomery County Deputy Coroner, Kent Harshbarger, changed his opinion on the cause of death from homicide to accidental death. He said this change was not, at any time, supported by the Montgomery County elected coroner. The unprecedented change of opinion severely undermined certain elements of this case. He furthered with, quote, I weighed what would be best to serve the victim, her family, and the public. The risk of the defendant, Mize, going unpunished for his actions, I accepted a plea of a lesser charge. I trust the public will understand this was not a decision that I made lightly, end quote. Judge Janine N. Pratt also spoke out during the sentencing hearing. She expressed difficulty over her decision of, of the sentence. She said the original recommendation was for a sentence of a minimum of 15 years and a maximum of 18 years. She said she has lost sleep over the decision. She further said that prosecutors have more knowledge of an investigation and how they have to evaluate possible outcomes and evidence issues. Nothing is guaranteed by a trial. She said she would give Joshua Mize consecutive sentences in order to protect the public and to hold Joshua accountable. She addressed Joshua Mize directly, saying, quote, Your actions were just plain evil, end quote. By running the sentences consecutively, his maximum sentence total was 23.5 years. He was also ordered to pay a fine of $20,000 for involuntary manslaughter, $10,000 for obstructing justice, and $2,500 for the theft charge. The court does have the option to deny Joshua receiving good time credit. He did receive credit for 234 days that he spent in jail, however. Two of Kalen's family members read impact statements in court, and many others gave impact statements by writing them. One family member said, quote, Evil does exist in this world. Don't let Kalen's death be in vain. He is a danger to all children and women, end quote. Another family member pointed out that Kaylin was premature and spent 22 days in NICU. Quote, she was little, but she was the sweetest little girl, end quote. Joshua Mize declined to give a statement other than, quote, it's a tragedy, end quote. Judge Janine Pratt then went over Joshua's history. She pointed out that he has a history of violence and drug abuse. She said that he was on post-release control, also referred to as parole, during the time of the incident and had only been released from prison since May of 2021, and he received eight infractions during his time in prison. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of Kaylin Cologne's story. Rest easy, Kaylin. Rest easy, baby girl. You are free. If you haven't done so and you get anything out of this content, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment with your thoughts. If you have a case suggestion, please email it to me at Jenny period Elisa period discusses at gmail.com. And until the next video, toodles. I am equal parts, sacred and profane.